Good evening and welcome back to Byline, our uh, weekly public affairs show right here on Amherst Media, co-sponsored by Amherst Media and the League of Women Voters. And uh, through these shows, we are trying to introduce or reintroduce, depending upon who the guest is, uh, people to the community who are serving in uh, our new town council or as our new a newly elected state representative and state senator on Beacon Hill. And so today our guest is uh, Andy Steinberg, who's no stranger to the community because uh, you, Andy, have served in uh, quite a number of public offices over a number of years. Give us your quick uh, elevator speech on your, uh, your history with town government uh, offices. Um, well, good evening, Stan. I appreciate you doing this show and appreciate being here. Um, I have served in a number of capacities, first on town meeting um, and then on the finance committee and uh, three years as chair of the finance committee, uh, which I was the position that I held in 2014 when I ran for select board and then I was re-elected to the select board in 17, so I served almost five years on the select board until it concluded its business with the uh, transition to the Charter Commission's uh, work, the Charter and the Council. Great, so when you ran at large, the community basically knew who you were, and uh, they got to know you uh, even better, but you had to reframe a lot of what you were uh, talking about because you, had an, you were going into a new body. Could you tell us a little bit about how that campaign differed from your previous campaigns in terms of what you focused on because uh, you were going from a five-member board to a 13-member board but that 13-member council was replacing uh, more than 200 people uh, as a town meeting so uh, tell us a little bit about how you thought differently and what you found differently on the campaign trail as a result of campaigning for this different town-wide office. Well, it was an interesting um, campaign and a different campaign, though um, I think the differences came from some other things. One is, um, peculiarly enough, the time of year, because uh, it was uh, a campaign that was taking place to coincide with the general election when there were a lot of other things on the ballot. And um, there was also, instead of just an election for town offices and a small number of town offices, um, two people for a select board, two people for uh, the library trustees and the school committee. All of a sudden, there was uh, really uh, six elections going on for council all at the same time, of which voters had to be uh, participating in two of the six elections, but we're sort of seeing signs and being aware of information about all of them. So uh, as I was uh, going through the campaign process, I had to be very clear about what it was that uh, I was a candidate for. And frequently I had to explain that they were going to be voting for an at-large, two at-large, Three at large Three candidates at large, and right. two district candidates <laughs> in participating in two separate elections. And, uh, you know, th there was a lot of um, voter education that was required that was probably something greater and different from previous elections. And all of that had to happen in the context of a statewide election and uh, where you were used to having the whole spotlight on town government in an April election. Now you were on a ballot in November, September and November, and you had to fight for some attention from the voters, even as they were trying to learn and understand what this new town council was going to be uh, all about. So that must have been interesting. And of course, you and Alyssa Brewer both got elected to the town council, and you were the only two who had previously served on the select board. So when you sit at the town council meetings, since each of you brings different experience, you and Alyssa are both wearing two hats, a former select person and a current at-large 
member. Do you find uh, some tension and conflict there? Do you find yourself censoring yourself uh, because you don't want to talk too much about the past? Or how does that, how does that work for you? Um, I try and sense what the interests are of my fellow council members because uh, there are frequent times that they actually are looking to us for background on how a decision had been made previously and what um, we would, how we would uh, transition that thought process and that kind of decision to the council in its new role. You know, because it is 13 people. Uh, it is different dynamic than being on a five-person board. Uh, this is a, a really great group of people to work with. They're um, bringing a whole range of very different experiences and different knowledge, but variable experience with town government. And uh, I think that's what Alyssa and I ran to offer continuity and experience and that it, and I uh, find that the council really looks to us for that experience. And when you say how the previous decision was made by a select board, a previous select board, uh, do you mean the process or the content or both? Uh, it can be both. Um, as far as process is concerned, I think that that is something that it might be interesting for new members of our council to know, but um, it's important that the council find its own way of making decisions. And we're now in a period of developing and understanding what the process needs to be going forward. Uh, but at the same time, there was information that we had, reasoning that we had for decisions that we made, and that is of probably greater interest to the council because yeah. that's something where they really can build on what we did as opposed to reinventing it. So you're careful about uh, how often you speak, when you speak, and uh, sometimes you're speaking as today's counselor about today's issue from today's perspective, and sometimes you're offering history that might be valuable for the council as they're considering uh, action uh, on something uh, today. Very much so. And I think that all of us on the council need to be conscious of the fact that there are 13 of us and that there's a uh, limited amount of time that we have available in public meeting we don't want to have any one person capitalize the time. So we need to be respectful of each other and respectful of the amount of time that uh, we are presenting. I am very cautious about it, and I find that my colleagues in the council are very cautious and respectful also. So uh, each of you brings some unique capacities and experience to the table and some of you um, might be a group of a part of a group of one or two or three other people who have background and experience in a particular issue so uh, like Evan and uh, and Kathy Shane uh, I'm sorry Evan and um, and Darcy Dumont uh, have a lot of experience and focus on uh, climate change um, not that Kathy doesn't have an interest in it but both you and Kathy have a lot of background in, in finance and in your case, you have significant public finance background because you served on the Finance Committee and you were elected chair of the Finance Committee uh, by the council. Am I correct about that? Yes. Okay. And Kathy is the elected vice chair. And she's the vice chair. So we have two people with a lot of experience in economics and public finance who are leading that committee. That is that is really terrific. Let's focus on that committee a little bit because it, it's starting to get up and running and starting to take on some tasks. But of course, the biggest task is the creation of the annual budget for the, for the municipality. And so um, we used to have a finance committee. Now we have a finance committee, but it's different. Tell us how it's different from what you had experienced as a member of the Finance Committee previously and what as chair you think uh, is going to be different and how this is going to play out under our new form of government. 
Some of it is work in progress, but uh, the finance committee that existed previously was, also, was a committee of the town meeting. It was appointed by the town moderator and it was charged in the former Town Government Act with providing advice to the town meeting about any matter that might come before it and the financial consequences of that action. The um, current Finance Committee is a committee also of the legislative body. So there's a lot of similarity in how it proceeds. So I'm not sure that the differences will, in the larger sense, will be that great. There are differences in timing, however, because uh, there's a smaller window between when the town manager is required under the new charter to provide a proposed budget for council's consideration than was required under the pre previous Town Government Act, so that we are going to have to create an appropriate procedure that allows the committee to review and understand each of the budget uh, section recommendations, but to do it in a smaller And these window. are the recommendations from the town manager and his department heads? Yes. Okay. And... Uh, uh, but there is another difference, isn't there, here? Um, you were, you're talking about a finance committee that was a committee uh, of 200-plus people. I'm sorry, from among 200-plus people, and it was a handful of people on the finance committee. Here we have five finance committee members out of a body of 13 who will ultimately approve the budget. How is that going to be different in terms of um, how you think the process is going to work because eight, five of you will be in the room when you vote on the recommendation to bring to the full council. Eight of them will not have been there. However, some of them might have been on some of the alphabet soup of other budget-related committees that we have in town. Uh, so there's three other panels that relate to finances, one on capital, there's uh, a, a joint committee. Uh, help me with the names of these committees. The, the Joint Capital Planning Committee, which will be working on the capital side, right. buildings and equipment and uh, the others, the operating budget side. The budget coordinating group is really trying to coordinate the process of budget development with the schools and the libraries and the town. And, the town. Yeah. and uh, so the, and then the uh, participatory budget budgeting committee. commission is a new feature as well. I mean, it's a new feature. Uh, so you've got three panels that are working uh, away on their part and their role in the budget process. And then all of those get integrated through the work of the finance committee. And then ultimately the council as a whole has to take up that budget. Yeah. Are most or all of the members of the other three panels council members? Um, no, and actually on the finance committee they're not all council members either, nor were all of the finance committee members and the old finance committee members, members of, town of town meeting. meeting okay. Because the moderator Good. could um, appoint people um, without regard to whether or not they, they were, were members town of town meeting. Okay. And occasionally there were people who were appointed or people who um, had been members of town meeting and were not re-elected but continued to serve. Um, there is a provision in the new charter uh, that provides that in addition to the five members who are members of the finance committee, there also are non-voting uh, community members to be members of the Finance Committee. How many? Uh, I believe it's four. Uh, and those people would apply through the normal process to volunteer for town committees? Or are they going to be recruited? We haven't uh, determined that yet. Um, and uh, that actually was on our agenda for the first meeting, but we only very had very brief time to discuss it. But we um, want to find people and encourage people to contact us if they would like to serve. Contact who? Uh, 
contact the uh, probably the uh, president of the council unless we incorporate it into the um, committee general committee process, which is a mechanical thing that. So the charter to doesn't determined. dictate how those four people get selected. It leaves that open, and the council will have to decide upon a process. Uh, there's a fair degree of um, flexibility left in the charter as to how it is to be done. Okay. And there are actually two different committees because the governance committee may have the larger role in how the citizen members of committees are chosen generally and then obviously this would need to be consistent with it. But uh, I hope that that process can be completed prior to the time that the town manager is required to deliver the budget which is 45 days prior to council action so that um, they are fully integrated on the committee and participating in the committee process mm -hmm. as we review the proposed budget for FY20. So this uh, first budget cycle is going to be quite challenging. I mean, budget cycles are always challenging because you have to set priorities and, and the priorities really demonstrate the values of the, of the government and, and uh, there's not enough money to do everything that people want. So there's a lot of choices and decisions that have to be made. But this time, you also have to set up the process for completely um, integrating into the new governmental structure the uh, rest of the steps. So here's one example where the charter is not so specific that it's just automatically done. A bunch of different decisions have to get made before you can even appoint the people, and then you get to work on the rest of the, the budget process. So options are that the town manager could be given the authority to recommend to the town council using the normal committee process, uh, recruiting process, or it could be that the governance committee, the committee that covers governance and, and appointments, could be the place that the recommendations get developed. Yes, there, there really are three types of committees that you, when you, uh, one is the just general committees that exist in town other than the planning board and the zoning board of appeals. And there's a process in the charter for uh, the town manager to make um, recommendations, to make the appointment subject to confirmation by the council. Um, then the planning board and zoning board of appeals are specifically held for appointment by the council itself. And then there's this third group that um, we're really into with the finance committee, and that is um, committees of the council that include citizen members as either voting or non-voting members. And uh, our governance um, committee will need to work on developing the final steps for all of those processes and I believe is working doing that as we meet now. Um, the uh, challenge is everything we do in this uh, new council right now is we're sort of beginning to understand the complexity of the charter and how it can be implemented most effectively to meet our expectations and the community's expectations for our new form of government as we also try and do the town's business. So uh, let me try to summarize this. If you're a citizen, a resident of Amherst, and you would like to serve as a non-voting member from the community on the Finance Committee, at this point you have to do two things. One is you have to watch the process and keep following it so you know when the process is settled and what the decisions, uh, the process is going to be for the actual appointments. And the second thing is if you want to gump, get a jump start on it, you let the president of the town council, the uh, chair of the finance committee, the chair of the governance committee, and the town manager know that you have an interest. 
Yes, and hopefully what we will do, and but again, this is something that I just don't know because we're all working in pockets at this point right. and the governance committee is working separately. The select board had a citizen activity form which um, was a, is available on the website and then people would just um, complete the form and fill it out. I, um, it is my understanding that that is where we are uh, remaining as a general process. Mm -hmm. And uh, if the Finance Committee uh, appointments can be incorporated within that process, I think it allows for the easiest accessibility for uh, the community members who are interested to demonstrate that interest. And uh, so if uh, that is what we can achieve, that will be the best solution. So the form, when I last saw uh, in one of your council meetings, was still being uh, finalized. It was being uh, refined and, and perfected. Is that process finished? That I don't know because that's really the uh, work of a different of committee. Of a different committee, okay. So at this point, a um, uh, couple of options for people, but let somebody know that you're interested Absolutely. is the bottom That's line. the bottom line. I don't think Just. you need to let all of the people that you mentioned know. Uh, probably isn't a good use of anyone's time, time. Okay. but it's important to let somebody Bloody know. know so that they are considered when we get in the mix and, uh, and so maybe just filling out the form online is a good place to start because yes. they're going to look at those forms no matter what yes okay so uh, let's go on to another quick uh, uh, topic here so how do you see the integration of these uh, other committees outside that are outside of the finance committee they have well established historic processes except for the participatory budgeting commission so do you see those other two panels, Capital and the Coordinating Budget Committee, both operating pretty much the way they have in the past? Yes, and, uh, and I have served on both of those committees in prior uh, form of government. Uh, so let's just be real quick on each one of them. The Joint Capital Planning Committee includes um, members of the school committee and uh, the library trustees are represented and, uh, it also includes um, some senior level staff within each of the three segments. The purpose is to um, allow each of the um, or organizational pieces, each of those functional areas that have capital needs, schools, libraries, and the town departments, to um, present their needs um, and their requests to a group and the group then meets and um, considers what each of requests is, tries to understand the requests, look at the entire budget that is available for capital because um, we will have determined an amount that we assume will be spent on capital and it's a question of what is most important. What um, has happened um, before is the, and is required to continue in the charter is that we not just make the recommendation for the next budget year of what should be in the capital um, purchase act list for that year, but to develop a 10-year plan so that if a need is presented um, for some major piece of equipment or even you know, a relatively minor piece of equipment, that it, it, it isn't just forgotten. It is placed into a year um, so when we start the process, we look at the list from the prior as to what's proposed for the next year, and obviously they're making modifications to it. In the, in the few minutes that we have left, I'd like to focus on the Participatory Budget Commission because that's a new function. The other two committees are going to operate pretty much the way, or panels, are going to operate pretty much the way they've operated in the past, and they'll be interacting with the Finance Committee pretty much in the same way they did the previous Finance Committee. But the Participatory Budgeting Commission is new. This is a new idea for our town. Give us, uh, we have about two minutes left, give us a, a thumbnail of what we should expect there and uh, how you think citizens of the town, the community residents, will be able to participate in that. Uh, 
this is an area that really needs a lot of work to develop. But I do want to talk, um, answer your question by saying what I understand the purpose was the, the Charter Commission and putting it forward and the vision that we need to then carry forward, that there should be some amount of money, some portion of the budget where citizens then can come in and say, we have these needs that we have identified and that are excluded from the budget process in the past. We would like to have those considered. And uh, the purpose of having this new process is to allow both citizens to make that request and to participate in the consideration of all of the requests that come forward. Um, even though they may be small, we haven't determined the amount of money that will be available for that. Um, it helps to incorporate um, the um, citizens in understanding the complexities of budget processes, and it helps um, to hear from the community about what their perceived needs are. Uh, the challenge in the budget as a whole, and I'm sure that you've had that experience, is that uh, we have a police department, we have a fire department, we have a uh, public health department, we have libraries, we have teachers, so that the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're funding the good work that's going on. And so these are likely to be uh things that would be a one-time expenditure because they wouldn't typically be built into the base of the budget, although maybe sometimes people come forward with something that will take two years as opposed to one year. And, in, and another way of maybe describing it is it's a second bite of the apple. If you haven't been able to convince the Finance Committee and your town councilors to incorporate something in the budget that's in the nature of a, of a one-time expenditure for your neighborhood, your street, whatever, you might have a second bite at the apple to try to incorporate it in the budget through the Participatory Budgeting Commission. And with that, we're out of time. So I want to thank you, Andy, for thank being you. here today. Thank and you. to our listeners, thank you for being here. And uh, you heard it here. If you want to be a non-voting resident member of the Finance Committee, uh, fill out that form, uh, the volunteer form on the, on the town website. And if you um, are interested in participating and trying to get some additional help as this budget process unfolds for something important to you that doesn't make it into the primary budget, get ready to offer your ideas about what could be done through the Participatory Budgeting Commission. We look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.